Gaming commercials have really been the awkward teen as far as finding its legs in the television market goes. I really wanted to do gaming commercials in general, but after seeing several dozen Mario, Zelda, and Kirby commercials, I decided to just kind of stay exclusively with Nintendo. Man, I do love me some good commercials, but I also love me some very bad commercials too. Marketing companies will do just about anything and try just about anything to see what sticks. In turn, this can cause the ridiculous, the creepy, the epic, the hilarious, and sometimes even the heartbreaking. Now this video mainly consists of my favorites that gave me a laugh or just made me feel pretty good. So, welcome to my top 10 Nintendo TV commercials. As always, this is my list and my list alone, so you know, if you're upset, if you're disappointed or something, I'm sorry. Don't feel bad for me, I don't, I'm, I'm fine. I'm sorry for you. But you can let me know what your top 10s are in the comments down below. And if there are any top 10s you wanna see here on the show, shout them out there too. With that said, let's begin. Number 10. You know, when I think of Paul Rudd, or that man that never ages, I think of slap at the base, or the weather outside is weather. Or even 60% of the time, it works every time. Or the perfect boyfriend for Phoebe, or a lady killer in Wet Hot American Summer, or Josh Lucas in Clueless, or Ant-Man, or even Alex in Gross Vivasser Melonin. Perfect. I would never even think of Paul Rudd as that kid in the SNES commercial from the 90s. Paul Rudd was just 22 years old in this commercial, and four years later we'd know him as the man who made out with his sister. In a movie, fiction, they're not actually related, so don't worry. When Nintendo was trying to boost its sales for the SNES and its new games in 1991's holiday season, they wanted to emphasize power. Granted, I was too young to understand this one at the time, but I'm positive any kid would get hype off of the thought of playing Zelda or F-Zero on a massive projector screen. It's also a bit strange to hear Hunchback's Tony J being the god voice. Now you're playing with power, super power. But damn it if he doesn't get the job done. I'm also curious about who these other kids are that amassed here and what their plans are after the gaming session is done. Is this like a zombie movie or a like a breakfast club or something. Seems like something's going down. I I need the itinerary. I want to know what's up. I want to know what is going on so I can be a part of it. I, I need to know. Number nine. When the Nintendo GameCube launched in 2001, it was joined by an ad campaign centered around an IRL glass cube that seemed to offer a near VR experience. Some of the commercials were pretty well done and exciting, and others fell very flat. Wait, what? It says I wink here in the script. Who wrote this? I can't make a wink sound for anyone to hear. Anyways, a launch title from the Super Mario Bros. IP that didn't star Mario was a super risky choice in its own right. But somehow, the accompanying commercial was even more bold. It was so far and away the wrong tactic to tease an adventure ghost hunting game. Like, am I hitting on emo women or catching ghosts? Why would I ever confuse or relate the two? Now see, if I were directing this, I would have stuck with a nice horror commercial with some live action vacuum wielding dude cautiously whispering, Mario, before something gets him. Cut to the ground where his flashlight falls, cracks, and eventually just fades out. Luigi's Mansion. Embrace the cheese that is the Haunted Mansion. Show the title, show the gameplay, show the release date, let's go. Ugh, I'm riled up. Sorry, I just want to really direct things. I miss directing movies and dumb shorts and stuff. Also, like many games coming out this year, I am bummed that's coming out on the 3DS and I would have loved it on the Switch. Just put everything on the Switch. Put everything! Number eight. Nearly five years after the release of the NES, we were still getting revolutionary titles. Around the time of the Game Boy, we started seeing releases for both systems, including Dr. Mario. For how simplistic the premise of Dr. Mario is, it didn't take long for it to become widely accepted. At least, I hope the populace at the time didn't think viruses were cured by throwing pills at them. But my favorite commercial for Dr. Mario sure did prescribe heavy doses of fun and jazzy feels. It's infectiously catchy to the point that I've watched it many times. Oh, oh, Dr. Mario! Oh, oh. Killer game from Nintendo. Dr. 
Super Mario. Wow! But it ain't what you think! You start to really pick on the strange details after several replays. For example, for some weird ass reason, for the life of me, I have no idea why or how this ended up in the final cut, but there is six seconds straight of just this dude and random mumbly gibberish noise. <laughs> Six seconds of nothing in a 30 second commercial. That could have just been the fucking commercial. Just put Dr. Mario and 25 seconds of that noise in the kid and I'm in. There's just a lot of questionable things in this music video ad that it just kind of gave it this 90s character that you couldn't seem to hate. Also, apparently when you are playing head to head with someone, they want you to wear helmets because they're afraid you're going to hit head to head. The 90s were great, I think. Number seven. Since Kirby's Dream Land first launched on the Game Boy in 1992, the marketing campaign started off a bit strange. A big theme was comparison, like the Kirby vs. a super buff dude commercial, in which Kirby eventually sucks him up only to spit out a disturbing orb of nightmare fuel. <laughs> The early commercials were also hard to watch because the portrayal of Kirby was off, to say the least. There was also a biker gang poetry commercial where Kirby brutally murders everyone in the background, but none of them hold the candle to my favorite. The 2005 commercial for Kirby's Canvas Curse on the DS. This thing took awkward to a whole new level. It showed a day in the life of Kirby and a giant ass finger having one long romantic day together. Now, I know I'm gonna get a lot of flack for saying this, but if you just look at it for a hot second, that's not a finger. The implications were definitely hard to ignore. I can only assume it was intended to get kids excited about the touchscreen incorporation, unless that was just a ruse to excuse lewdness for notoriety's sake. Just as a general rule of thumb, never say okay to a, and then there comes the giant finger idea. In the end, I'm glad it exists for everyone to see. Number six. A few years after the release of the Super Nintendo, the first ever Mario Kart saw its debut. At the time, there weren't many younger audience accessible racing games. It seems like this commercial right here was done in a monster truck rally ad style, which really kind of ramps up the hilarity. Let's go racing in Super Mario Kart Funny Car Madness! Only on Super NES, turn the track into a giant mud pit! Put burn rubber on ice, water asphalt! Fire. Mix it up with the big boys! See Bowser and his big foot popping truck! See Yoshi's go kart really go! Mushrooms, banana peels, turtle shell! Right, oh my! just kind of goes to show how hyperbolic the SNES era's commercials were. I want this guy to hype up every mundane thing now. Are you hungry and need to eat fast? fast? Grab a bag of popcorn and throw it in the fast microwave! Ah! Watch as your food does full 360s! The steamy results are not for the faint of heart! Explosive! The intense snack will leave you bruised and buttered! Number 5! Picture yourself at an upscale restaurant with your significant other. You're both dressed to the nines. Everything surrounding you is of divine quality and extremely expensive. You've just heard a lovely ditty from the pianist. The evening is perfect. Then enters Mr. Creosote, the likes of which requires a puke bucket for every meal. The rest of your evening is ruined by periodic eating, spit up vomit, and the concluding human explosion. This would be you in 1983 Monty Python's The Meaning of Life. Or in this case, 1995's Yoshi's Island commercial. Almost note for note, this commercial mimics the scene from The Meaning of Life, and we're led to believe each part of this man's meal is a part of the game. The core idea is that Yoshi's able to eat a lot in there, but this direct translation proves to be horribly off-putting and somewhat graphic. This is drastically juxtaposed by how cute and adorable Yoshi's Island actually is. Guys, you do not see commercials like this anymore. Number four. There are many, many great Legend of Zelda commercials from the 80s and 90s for the NES and the SNES, but my favorite was this super off-the-wall, goofy, and creepy as f one for the NES. Watch Zelda become a legend on your Nintendo Entertainment System. Zelda! <laughs> 
which way to go. Good times. It's clear that there was only a remote amount of understanding of the game at the time. The commercial features a weird looking dude in a black leotard and turtleneck who is doing an interpretive dance that represents monsters in the game. He also just says their name super creepily, but we're also shown the in-game sprites on screen along with subtitles. So it's kind of like a sound along or a sing along, but you get really uncomfortable. This guy had to do everything, even his own sound effects. I wonder what that dude is doing today. Let's see here, John Kassir, looks like, oh wow, the Crypt Keeper. If written Final Fantasy 15, Scrooge McDuck. All right, John, well played. Sometimes you can do really weird projects and still be pretty successful. But if that were me, that shit would haunt me until I died. Man, what a weird commercial. Then again, I recently did a commercial for Nintendo in which I dressed up in a very small and disgusting tingle outfit. So, I take everything I said back, John. I'm very sorry. Kulalimpa. Kulalimpa. Number three. You know, I don't need to describe this next commercial because it was so popular, its song became synonymous with gamers everywhere. With a killer narrator voice, which I can only assume is Don LaFontaine's, you're already on the right track. The commercial was just so effective, it was super recognizable, and that song choice was perfect. When Super Smash Bros. first debuted on the N64 in 1999, it flew off the shelves. Its commercial also stood out not only for being cute, funny, and bad ass all at once, but because it represented the game in an accurate manner. Quite rare for a video game commercial. There was a perfect balance of gameplay and live action after the joke landed. This game had such a profound impact on our generation. It opened the floodgates for kids wanting to see which character would be in the next game. And since we're all being crazy with Smash Brothers recently for the holiday season, uh, here are some unrealistic answers for what I want in Smash. Sora, Crash, Spyro and Kratos. Because why the f not? Number two. What you may not know about me is that I went to school for theater and I love musicals. What you do know is that I love video games and Mario. And when the ad campaign for Super Mario Odyssey mixed my love for both, I melted like butter. Before that, the only place we ever saw Mario dance or kind of be a part of a musical aspect really was DDR Mario Mix and uh, just dance, I guess. But with this advertisement, he really got his ability to bust a groove. Super Mario Odyssey is far and away my favorite 3D Mario game of all time. The freedom of exploration, the beauty in each detail, the never-ending charm, and all of the revolutionary ideas just show the amount of love and care that Nintendo poured into this game. That same care and consideration went into their musical number that never, in my opinion, gets old. The song is so poppy, jazzy, and feel good, and it shows everything you can do in the game effectively. Kate Davis's performance is so lively that you know she has a giant smile on her face throughout the entire song. This commercial and song combo is a great part of my life currently today that I keep coming back to. It was such a warm and happy experience for me altogether. I highly recommend the song, the dance, the commercial, the game, and really everything. This whole thing has a lot of heart. Number one. While there are a lot of funny, random, and weird commercials from the big N, the 2005 commercial set for Mario Superstar Baseball is my absolute favorite. Each one is extraordinarily minimalist for some reason. The humor is super dry and blunt, which works really well. I need to break down each one of these. Most of them feature an empty ballpark, save for one or two Mario characters. One has Mario tickling the ivories in classic Mario Brothers fashion. The second one pits the most derpy Bowser costume against a baseball pitching machine. But my number one Nintendo commercial out of all of this, the real king of this set, made me laugh harder than the rest. It's very short, but very funny. Let's just take it in in its entirety and let's leave this top 10 to rest. So those 
are my top 10 Nintendo commercials. I had so much fun with this one. I went down so many retro commercial YouTube rabbit holes. It was fascinating to see how things have changed and developed over the years. Believe me, I'll be doing a lot more top 10 commercials like this in the future. If you guys like it, I may continue the trend of doing it by company. Who knows? I'd love to get even more ideas for future top 10s from you guys. So let me know in those comments down below. That's it, that's all guys. And I'll see you all next time.